You are about to watch a film by the name of Oceanic Nurseries. Oceanic Nurseries refers to the vastness of the ocean while describing the need for young fish to reestablish their former habitat. A nurturing safe area for reproduction will be required for the fish stocks to return in Canada. Canada has three oceans surrounding it with little or no protection for the majority of this coastline. When Canadians look at the sea, they often don't get to see beyond the surface. For us to understand why we need conservation, first, we have to go below the surface. environment is underneath the water and people don't see it, it's often ignored. The biggest challenge is to actually demonstrate that there's a need for protection. To understand this, we have to go down below the surface. There's a lot of terrestrial ecosystems that have been protected, but less than 1% of the world's oceans are protected legally. I think it's because it's out of sight, out of mind. Parks Canada is taking the lead in initiating a comprehensive conservation effort. It is currently in the process of a public consultation to educate and determine the public's interest in creating marine conservation programs. I work for the Park Establishment Branch of Parks Canada and uh, we're the crew that implement uh, or that create new national parks and national marine conservation areas across the country. And we're the lucky ones who get to implement uh, the former Prime Minister Kei Chen's parting legacy of creating 10 new national parks and five new national marine conservation areas across Canada. Now, the Southern Strait of Georgia proposal is one of the five. Guayanas is um, the second. Uh, Lake Superior, which is well on its way, actually, is the third. And the, um, they've just announced a new one a few months ago at uh, Ile de la Madeleine, or the Magdalen Islands, in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. We're now in the course of preparing a marine atlas for the study area that would include about 30 data layers, 30 data sheets, mapping everything from existing human use in this area to the marine biodiversity aspects, whale distribution, fish distribution, invertebrates where we can, um, water quality aspects, where are the, uh, the outfalls, where are the shellfish closures, what is fished where, what fish enclosures already are in place. We've heard from fishermen loud and clear that if we do want to consider marine protected areas here, at least begin with identifying those areas that are already closed to fishing or at least do some form of fishing. There are many different groups and individuals with a stake in the ocean. This group is composed of commercial fishers, sports fishers, aboriginals, recreational users and many more. Each one has something to lose from the collapse of Canada's wild fish. I'm always surprised sometimes our conservation efforts on the island bump up against the people that make their, their living on the island. Mm -hmm. and, um, and forestry, for example, is a long-term part of the island economy. Um, we've had rockfish closures in a couple of areas off Gabriola this year for the first year, and I think those have really been well received. And I do think that sport fishermen really see themselves as, as being um, the front line and much more able than the, the mega offshore fisheries uh, to be able to keep an eye on the resources available locally. But I really had myself a feeling of a bit of a sea change when uh, a friend of mine on the island who's just got the reddest of necks and if you ever told him he can't cut trees that would be a big problem but when he says well when I grew up on Gibriola and he's probably only 30 years old you know between this island and that the kelp was so thick you couldn't get through with a boat now what's happening that this has changed so much in my short lifetime and when I hear that from from someone like him I think well our conservation mandate in our community is, is broader than I think sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging. The ocean has been used for a waste dump for thousands of years. In times gone by, the waste was a lot less toxic than it can be in today's world. Unfortunately, there has been little effort to clean up even some of the most toxic of waste sites. I have the right to say what our ancestors believe. Who way? Who way? 
Be careful. We You can't put anything foreign into the ocean. Often, waste continues to find its way into the ocean as a result of the out-of-sight, out-of-mind attitude that pervades our society. Many sea creatures are adversely affected by what is dumped in oceans and rivers. Some find new homes, others find death. The ocean's currents are bringing all the plastics into areas of confluence called gyres. The biphenyls from the plastic products can be found in the water columns throughout the world's oceans. If you keep putting foreign objects into the ocean, 25 years has gone by, your grandchildren are going to suffer the consequences. Lots of people think that conservation needs to come top down, but I disagree. I think part of it needs to be from the government and from, you know, proper legal protection, but also bottom-up pressure can make a big, big difference as well. The main problems that coral reefs are facing in the future is climate change, climate change and ocean acidification, and that's something that we can all, you know, help with in the future. Just before uh, Prime Minister Kui Chen left office in his last budget, he put in significant funding for 10 new national parks across the country and five uh, national marine conservation areas, and one of those national marine conservation areas is the one here. So there is actually funding to go forward and to do the work um, for this national marine conservation area. And for many of you, as you know, without the money, it's pretty hard to do this kind of work. conservation to the point where you turn humanity into the endangered species but then there's no one to keep an eye on the park for you. All these islands are barren because there's no no livings to be had on them. You can do that if you want, we'll just move somewhere else, start again, do it somewhere else. Pharmaceuticals are finding their way into the waste stream, wrecking havoc with the environment. Fish and mammals are being affected by all of the hormones. Reproductive rates are demonstrating that there is a direct effect of the hormones being added to the waste stream. Perhaps many of the pro-sealing advocates would welcome the idea of a seal on birth control. Others might suggest that they start using toilets. The concept of respecting the ocean is still foreign to many people in both first and third world nations. We have not put enough effort into the protection of the marine environment. The ocean is still considered one of the prime areas for dumping waste. My grandchildren, today, Six years to the, this year, we haven't had herring roll spawn in our territory. Some scientists keep telling us that, oh, your, your stock is on the east coast of Vancouver Island. They wouldn't believe us that each herring, like you and me, have their own families. What our ancestors believe. They literally fished out our territory. Let's be clear, the only motive is corporate greed and profit and the interest of the shareholders. Former fisheries hauled in hundreds of tons of fish, where now there are only a few remaining individuals. Lingcod stocks are at 3% of their historic levels. You bastards don't own those fish. You don't own those rivers. You don't own that environment. That's ours. In today's Canadian Ocean, the sight of a school of fish can actually be a rare occurrence. Where once there were abundant fish, now only the odd survivor remains. Rockfish have a lifespan of over a hundred years and don't reach good breeding potential until they are over 20 years old. When fishing for salmon, rockfish are often caught and hauled aboard. When caught as a bycatch, they are sentenced to certain death. A rockfish cannot survive after being caught. Their air bladders do not allow them to go deep underwater after they have been brought up from the water they inhabit. This means that only a full fishing closure model will work to fully protect rockfish. The now depleted stocks will never recover without a proper conservation initiative. The Canadian government has put together a less than adequate rockfish conservation initiative. It will not be enough. To our right is, is Provincial Park and to the left is, is um, it's just a provincial foreshore. 
One of the few ways to take this journey is to use scuba divers to be the guides. Divers see and experience the ocean and understand the need for a conservation initiative. There has been a tremendous change in sea life in the last few decades. The establishment of the Gulf Islands National Park last year, I believe it was June 2003, that was uh, the first of the 10 new national parks to be established in Canada. Uh, it took nine years to get that national park established. We have to create uh, all 10 by 2008, so we have a bit of a challenge ahead of us to do that. The math doesn't really work, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. Unfortunately, this process has taken over a decade now and doesn't seem to be any closer now to fruition than it was in the beginning. The whole idea behind the process was to create some marine protected areas so that there are reserves like they have with land reserves in places like Africa, where species are given the opportunity to replenish their stocks and to thrive. The challenge we face is that we have a coastline that seems endless, and people consequently think there's room for everybody to share in the fish resources, with no need for refuges with full protection. In a country with cities thousands of kilometers from the oceans, as Canadians, we aren't aware of what is happening on our coasts. Canadian law has no provision for quickly dealing with protection. Habitat destruction is continuing despite lessons learned on the collapse of our East Coast fish stocks. And they have forgotten who they serve. Right. We need to take action now. I was able to introduce a bill, a private member's bill, three days ago, on Wednesday, in the House of Commons, calling for the transition to close containment of all farms on the west coast. We stop the Norwegian open net fish farms in our territory. We know that they are killing the wild salmon. The Gabriola Local Trust Committee is going through a project right now to develop a conservation plan for our entire island. We're trying to work on a couple of land acquisitions and needing a conservation plan to demonstrate how they would all fit in together. And we've also got a, a development permit area that protects the shoreline of Gabriola Passage. Mm -hmm. So for us to be doing this, some of this mapping that the Trust has been doing on, on ecological mapping, um, some of the aquifer mapping and mapping of what's happening underneath the ground as well, it's a perfect time to be looking at, at, at fitting a marine protected area and, and extending these park boundaries to Gabriola is a good time for us. It is a complicated process to determine jurisdiction, let alone what needs to be done. Aboriginals lay claim to much of the ocean and the fish in it. The provincial governments lay claim to the foreshore. The federal government lays claim to the control of the ocean's offshore resources. And commercial and sports fishers demand their rights to fish. The government's obligation to fulfill these rights resulted in the collapse of the Grand Banks cod fishery on the east coast of Canada. The legacy of this gross mismanagement of the fisheries has deeply hurt citizens of the east coast. And I have fished for 35 years starting way back in 1951, and I followed them pink salmon all the way from the ocean right in as far as we could fish to the boundaries. And uh, it was, 20 years ago, it was quite common to get five and 600 pink salmon a day when you were trolling. The last troll opening, it was in the Broughton. It was, they sent, DFO sent one boat in to test fish, and in three days, he got 12 fish. So uh, that gives you a little idea how it was. Kinkum Inlet used to have anywhere up to 700,000 spawners. I think last year it had 126. The fishermen who have traditionally worked in this area uh, are disappointed in the fact that they don't have a fishery here anymore. One of the things we're hoping to do today is that extend the boundary of the area that's being considered for the National Marine Conservation Area to have it come up here to Gabriola. Right now the focus is on a more southerly area and I think Parks Canada is going to need to hear from Gabriola residents that in fact this should be extended further north. Ecologically it makes a whole lot more sense. The whole area is, is uh, extremely abundant with uh, attached marine life. Things like uh, uh, anemones and nudibranchs and tunicates and all that sort of bottom stuff. And then of course the rockfish and yeah. lingcod, cabazon. This would be a good place to find red Irish lord and buffalo sculpin. And... The lingcod fishermen in the 30s caught 400 pounds of yellow eye rockfish, that's red snapper, for every 200 pounds of lingcod. And I'm talking Georgia Strait. 
Now, I mean, I've got a photograph in the book of, of uh, the only, in 1984, I swam with a small group of yellow-eye rockfish. There were 10 or 12 in the group. That's the only time I've ever seen schooling yellow-eye rockfish, period. And I'll challenge any underwater photographer to duplicate that photograph between here and the north end of Vancouver Island. It's dramatic what has been re removed. And it's not just uh, local fisheries, it's right up and down the coast. The uh, halibut fishery, which used to be a longline fishery, and the dogfish fishery, they've all taken uh, deep-dwelling rockfish. Which brings us back to stating the case for conservation. We have some great models in the world to help us to see what can be done. Australia has much the same governmental system as Canada and also has an Aboriginal component. It seems to me it's a very similar model where you get uh, multi-use um, zones for the different yep. ecological areas of the, of the region. They are decades ahead of us and have proven that a comprehensive conservation effort will work. They have watched as their sorely depleted fish stocks have returned to healthy levels. This was possible only because of a true understanding and belief that creating a protected area was possible. It was not a popular idea amongst their aboriginals or the fishers. Years later, they find their fish stocks healthy once more. I think marine sanctuaries is a better word to describe what we're going to be talking about because marine protected areas to a lot of people, a lot of people that reefs or the environment means a lot to in terms of fisheries or wanting to take something away from the reef. When you say a marine protected area, I think that term sounds, to me anyway, a little scarier than a marine sanctuary. I like the term oceanic nurseries, as oceanic is an adjective that describes living in the open sea, and nurseries describes a safe place for raising children. We have to understand that fish, like children, need a safe place to be raised. We have to have areas that will allow the fish stocks to come back, and that is in our own backyard. In the Great Barrier Reef, we have zoning, so we have different levels of protection. So there can be some areas that are completely no-take. Nobody can take anything out of it, nobody can fish in those areas, or areas where there can be moderated fishing in small amounts, catch, catch limits. I think that in this day, when people have so much power as individuals and as a community, they can make a big difference in both the way that they live, to try and be more environmentally sensitive, to try and really watch their carbon footprint, but also they can make a huge difference if their voices are heard. Because we live in democratic countries, if people want something and if they put enough pressure on the government, then changes will happen. There is hope because there's enough people now standing up. It all comes down to this. Do we live in a democracy or not? This is a test. It's currently 2012 and the Marine Protected Areas strategy doesn't seem any further ahead today than when we started eight years ago. The beginning of the project, Parks Canada invited us out in, to see what's down underneath the ocean using live feed video on a boat. The Parks Canada was going to implement a strategy with the final goal of creating marine protected areas. Here we find ourselves in 2012 still no marine protected area. And we have to push for having good conservation of our species. This means that the stocks can still be fished and it still means that there's a commercial fisheries, there are still a sports fisheries and that there are still places that divers can go and that there is something to see. I'm a marine biologist. You think we should uh, preserve the marine environment? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite animal that lives in the sea? Sea. Yeah. So what can we do to make a difference? How do we stop the rape of the oceans before it is too late? The East Coast cod stocks don't seem to be coming back. Many scientists feel that the destruction of habitat by draggers may have sealed the cod's fate. They may never return in our lifetimes. Do we want this to happen to the West Coast? Mother Earth. My, how much damage we do to Mother Earth to properly stand up and say, Mother Earth, but we never ever call her mom. The most precious gift of all for all of us 